Hello and welcome back. We're going to have a very practice-oriented discussion today, which is something that we really, really need. And it involves what look like very, very simple concepts, basic, and they are very, very simple. And yes, they are basic. And we discover on the spiritual path, journey, walk, whatever you want to call it, we do, we discover that these simple ideas are what we most need. And at the same time, it's what we most resist and run away from, maybe kicking and screaming in horror and terror, or maybe not, but to the extent that resistance of these ideas comes up for you today, understand that all resistance to truth is of the ego. It's the ego at play. And we've all listened to it many, many times countless times, or this conversation would not be happening. So for those of you who are new or newer to this series of videos and to A Course in Miracles, welcome. Those of you who are experienced course students, again, welcome and veterans of this channel, welcome. This is for everyone, because the ideas that we're talking about are universal for everyone. They're universally applicable, making absolutely no difference whether you are familiar with them or not, or what tradition or traditions you grew up in, if any, or that you currently practice, if any, something has drawn you here. It is your inner teacher that has drawn you here. It is your inner teacher that had you push play. If you found yourself here on YouTube with this channel suggested to you and you don't know why, now you do know why. It is the Holy Spirit saying, pay attention to this. I've got something to tell you and you're going to want to hear it. We often find ourselves on the path in just such a position where we find ourselves drawn to something, where we become really, really curious about something, and we're not sure why. That's why your inner teacher is speaking to you, and something really critically important has happened. And I hope you get the magnitude magnitude of this. You have chosen to listen, so thank you. On behalf of every single living thing, it's very important. So stick around. A Course in Miracles makes it very, very clear that we're not a body. This is not me. Of course it's not. When you look at your physical body, it's not you. We're more than this. You know this. You do. I know that you know this. If you did not acknowledge this on at least some level, you wouldn't be interested in spirituality at all. At all. Much less a Course in Miracles. It's quite clearly not who we are. Yet here in the world, we take it for us. We think this thing, which is 80% water and highly fallible, highly fallible, 
subject to total destruction, disease, decay, sickness, broken bones, frailty here, frailty there, everywhere we look, which gradually loses its vigor and its umph over time and wastes away. Is that really the Son of God? Of course not. Again, we all know this. It is, in fact, a very different question whether we choose to acknowledge it or not. That's up to you. We can all reject everything said here on this video if we want to. You can reject what this is saying. This is a pixelated image on your screen. I'm fond of saying that, but it's true. And I'm stating that over and over again for emphasis. When something lands for you, it is your inner teacher speaking to you. This is an assemblage of electronic dots. Yeah, it happens to resemble a middle-aged dude from Arizona. That's, that's what it looks like. It's not what it is. The point? Things are not as they appear to be, and you know this to be true. Our home, our true reality, is not on a spinning ball of rock that in and of itself is a limitation. This is a profound limitation. The body is limited. We're not a body, and this does mean however you want to take this, that we've limited our perception extremely. We have chopped it up and made ourselves super, super small, little, and finite, and limited, when, in truth, we are infinite and unlimited. You know this to be true, don't you? Doesn't mean that to hear these ideas from your inner teacher is not scary. All manner of reactions are possible here. They really are. From abject fear and denial to wanting to curse the pixelated image out which is completely unnecessary. It's an assemblage of dots. You could choose to reject this course and everything it says for the remainder of this lifetime, should you so choose. Again, it's your choice. The beauty of A Course in Miracles lies largely in the fact that it is a self-study curriculum. There is no hierarchy. This is certainly not in charge of you. It's an assemblage of electronic dots. How could this ever be in charge of you? There is no hierarchical structure here. There is no organization that dictates what you should and should not do, how much you must give here, and how much there, and what you should think about the building across the street, because they congregate on a different day than you. Yeah, there's none of that here. This is a self-study curriculum, meaning you take what you wish to take at a given time. You take what you're willing to take at a given time. So the practical lesson for all of us here is, you can phrase it as a question, how far are you willing to be led by your inner teacher today? How far along the path are you willing to be led today? 
are you willing to take what amounts to a great stride, an exponential or quantum leap, or none at all, or just a little shuffle? It's up to you. Even that little shuffle is tremendous. We don't even, when we do it, really truly realize the magnitude of a single loving act. This course famously says at the very beginning of chapter one, there is no order of difficulty in miracles. They are all the same. So even something that we think is small here in the world and relatively insignificant has the full power of something that looks deeply miraculous and looks huge. It's the same. All expressions of love are maximum. Maximum. So what do we here do when we look to be this? We can feel this. And if our knee hurts or something, it fucking hurts, <laughs> you know? Okay, this appears real to us. What do we do with this? knowing that this is not who we really are. Yet we're faced with a stack of bills, with going to work, with eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom, with doing life, as, as we call it here on Spinning Ball of Rock. Whatever that may look like for you, we have obligations. We have a life. We have a life, <laughs> as we put it here in the world. And things going on. So what do we do with this? Well, the course is quite clear with this happily. This does not need to be any kind of quandary, and there is no dilemma here unless you choose to make a dilemma out of it. And I invite you not to, but again, the choice is yours. Give this thing, the body, over to your inner teacher for his purposes, healing the mind. Let the Holy Spirit run the show. Give the body over to him for his purposes. Sounds very simple, is very simple. It's a simple statement, a gift that we make in our mind. What happens when we do that might blow your mind. Let it. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will show us. It will show you what to do in every situation. The proper use of this is as a communication mechanism to extend love, to share the Holy Spirit and the love of God, i.e. the Holy Spirit, through you to everyone. Use it for a communication tool. That's what this is being used for right here, a communication device. Because we're always communicating with our brother in some way. So what are we then communicating, love or fear? Peace or destruction? <laughs> yeah. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. He'll show you what to do in every situation. Just bring it to him. This willingness on our part is required. In fact, it's actually all that's required. He'll do the rest. You understand, of course, that the Holy Spirit, which I refer to throughout these videos as our inner teacher, inner, 
is not an outside force. It is not an outside power. There is nothing outside you. If you've never heard that before, welcome. There is nothing outside you. You know this to be true. The Holy Spirit is part of our mind. We're invited to listen to its guidance and to its instruction, which is constant. We're just not always listening. So again, it's very, very important that you're paying attention to this message today. Very important indeed. In fact, it really is the highest and best offering you could ever make anyone, anywhere, at any place in time. Your dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice. Nothing comes close. There is no close second. What do we do? We allow the Holy Spirit to use this as a communication device. What happens is the purpose of everything that you do is transformed. All of your relationships are transformed. Every interaction you have is transformed. The more you do this, the different, more differently you see everything. Everything appears different. Try it. I mean, that's what we're ultimately invited to do. Because we ourselves supply this willingness to be led. And we're extraordinarily hesitant to do so, of course, because we think we have to go it alone here in this world. First of all, we think we're alone. We're surrounded by 8 billion other pixelated images on our screen, and they appear to be separate from us. So we, we think that we're alone and in this insane delusional fantasy, and I can tell you for sure it is an insane delusional fantasy. There is no separation of any kind, which you know, or you would not be here. Yet there appears to be, of course. So we think that we have to do everything all by ourselves. We think we have to do every single thing on our own. And what makes it more stressful and worse is that we think that our brother is out to get us, that he's going to take our stuff. She's going to besmirch our precious reputation. Yeah, we think that we're competing with one another. Yet, in truth, there is no separate other at all. So how can we compete? There is no opponent, none, and no one else to compete against. So here in the world, as we've set it up with our economic systems as pretty much systems of rife competition, our sporting events or, or competitions, our legal system is highly competitive. Our political systems are set up to be winner-take-all, win-lose, right? It's so-and-so versus so-and-so. Now, there is no separation of any kind. If you've never heard that before, you'll hear it again, and maybe not from me. And you may not hear it again for the rest of this lifetime. Again, it's our choice. It's your choice as to whether you choose to follow these teachings or not. But something has drawn you in, and, and you're here, and many of you are longtime course students, so there's clearly something to it. Huh? 
It's the simplicity that we most need the repetition of. So does it seem boring? I don't know, maybe. I don't know. There are a lot of traditions out there, yet you've landed on this one that's very direct. You want to know directness? God is the only reality. And a lot of those traditions don't come out and say that, which doesn't make them wrong. This is just very direct, so welcome. We claim in life to want directness, don't we? We claim to want people to cut to the chase. What's the bottom line, especially in business, where we can't stand for somebody to equivocate at all? We become defensive and hostile toward them for wasting our precious time. Well, God is the only reality. So this does not mean that you don't exist. Oh no, far from it. The all, with a capital A, is the all. God extends himself. The Son of God, God's creation, us in other words, is the extension. We are the extension of God. Like extends like. Do this math. Go there with yourself. Please. Like extends like. We're known in A Course in Miracles as the thought of God. Like extends like. It does not extend unlike. Love extends love. It extends only itself. Not hatred. Not fear, but love. Another famous statement from A Course in Miracles that you may find extraordinarily helpful, ideas leave not their source. Thought of God leaves not its source. Capital S, if you please. Where are you? Hmm, exactly. Who and what are you? If you've ever thought that before, yes. Understand that we're not separate from our source. We've left it not, remember? This isn't you. It's not me. So, well, it appears to be, allow your inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, to guide you. Give this communication device over to him for his purposes and watch everything change. Watch. I mean, this is really how we learn. You don't have to take it from the pixelated image on your screen assembled in the collection of dots that looks like a middle-aged man, looks like I'm wearing a blue shirt, whatever that even means. right? You don't have to take it from the image. Put it into practice. This is how we really learn by doing it. You learn a course in miracles by doing it. The ideas are extraordinarily simple. It may contain over a thousand pages of words. The words say the same thing in many different ways. Where we really learn is through experience. We take these ideas and we bring just that little willingness to use them. Put them into practice in your daily life and what happens is extraordinary. Your experience proves them to be true. All of them. Your experience will prove them to you. Want proof? Excellent. Prove it to yourself. That's how we best learn. It's one thing to understand these ideas on an intellectual basis. 
It's another thing entirely to learn viscerally by doing it. That's what spirituality is in fact all about, regardless of the tradition. It is about experience. I had a teacher, a Buddhist teacher, years ago, Lama Michael Conklin from Portland, Oregon, who said something that has really stuck with me. Nothing exists until you experience it. So you don't have to believe anything that the Course says in writing, or you don't have to believe anything that Pixelated Image says on YouTube. Experience it. And believe it that that's how we learn. But you must first be willing to experience it. Need help? Your inner teacher will help you. He's helping you right now. So to the extent that there are questions about any of this, first and foremost, of course, and in keeping with our theme today, and every day, ask your inner teacher for guidance. And you're also more than welcome to ask for guidance here. Part of my role here is to answer any questions that you may have about this course, which raises lots of questions, <laughs> and the spiritual path in general. So if you have something that you would like to ask here, feel welcome to do that. It is a safe space, and there is no such thing as a question that's too basic, by the way. I mean, as, as we're told in school, often, there's no such thing as a dumb question. No, of course there's not. In fact, those are the questions that you might want to ask, because I guarantee you there's somebody on the other side of the world who's thinking the same thing, but is hesitant to ask. So you could be really, really benefiting people on the other side of the globe whom you're not likely to ever meet in person in this lifetime. You could be influencing the trajectory of many people worldwide simply by asking a question. So that is an invitation to use this discussion forum for just that. Also, if you have not yet subscribed, I'd love to have you do that. Please subscribe by clicking this button here in the corner of your screen. That arrow is a prompt. Then up will come a little dialogue box saying subscribe. <laughs> and when you do that, what will happen is you'll see several videos each week. So there are several recordings made on a weekly basis, and we're going through the text of A Course in Miracles. And I'm also more than happy to pause and do a standalone video or a series of standalone videos if needed to address topics key topics, things that are coming up for you live. That is what I'm interested in. So please ask questions if you've got them, and I will talk to all of you again very, very soon.